The following is a production of New Mexico State University. High on a campus hill at the University of Texas El Paso is the fabulous Chihuahuan Desert Gardens. By roaming the paths here, you can see over 400 plant species of the Chihuahuan Desert, the largest collection of its type anywhere. And this represents 10% of the Chihuahuan Desert plants. I began my tour at the cool contemplative garden where I met botanic curator, Wynn Anderson. Wynn, this is really beautiful here. It looks like a little, real peaceful area. Well, Curtis, I can't tell you how nice it is to have you all here at the Chihuahuan Desert Gardens. This is our contemplative garden, a little oasis zone and a good zero scape. And I want you to note the uh, water feature. It's not wasting water, it's very slow drip. And this does a lot to add humidity in this small and conf confined area. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, water features do have a, an important place in a good landscape in the southwest. Oh, yes. If you'll take uh, special care to cut down on evaporation, like the uh, shade structure, mm -hmm. and just as important is this wind buffering wall. It keeps the wind off it so you don't have evaporation, and it holds humidity around the plants. And you get the sound, and I think you get a little bit better sound yeah, with the in, wall. In this circular area, you get really good sound resonance. Uh, it's very interesting. You get to hear the splash of the water. It makes you feel good. There's a little humidity in the air, but you're not wasting a lot of water. So let's go take a look at the uh, habitat gardens, the sand garden, the uh, arroyo garden, and the grass garden. OK, sounds good. Let's go. Well, Wynn, this is nice. What habitat is this? This is the arroyo garden, and this is a really neat plant. You may recognize it. Well, this is Wyuli, I know one the of the name. Partheniums. Historically interesting from World War II, <laughs> yeah, looking absolutely. for a rubber supply. Uh, it was grown as a potential substitute for imported rubber during World War II, and occasionally you still find somebody uh, uh, experimenting with it. Uh, they do so mm -hmm. at the a and Research Center at, uh, here in West Texas, as a matter of fact. It's a good plant for our landscapes. It's an excellent plant. For the low very, desert area. Very drought tolerant. That's correct. It's not all that cold hardy. When I see another plant here with blue leaves that looks good with the Wyuli, and this oak looks that's, like it does well here. That's the Mexican blue oak. Oh, I see and it making acorns, so it's yes, happy it's, here. it's a happy camper. So this is another good plant for the arroyo or mountainside gardens. Well, it's a small oak, which is uh, nice and actually very fast growing. Most people think that oaks are too slow for their landscapes. This one's, uh, this one's only three years old in terms of being in the ground. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. And you have other habitats here, too. Yes, yeah, so let's go take a look. Okay. Well, when, what do we have here now? Well, this is the grass garden. We've got nine different species of grass in here, including this alkali sacatone. Beautiful feathery looking grass, mm -hmm. good landscape grass. You might recognize the blue grandma. Mm -hmm. We've That's got giant sacatone. A lot of things in here. And this is a different growing area. So someone who lives on the mountainside may have difficulty growing this. Some of these grasses, yes, would not be appropriate for the mountainside, uh, although we do have um, Muhlenbergia porteri, which is really good for the mountainside. Bush muley is the common name because it is often found underneath shrubs in the desert. There's a good reason for that. That's right. Uh, it's so palatable as a, as a, gra a forage grass. The uh, cattle and horses will eat it down to nothing, but out in uh, areas where grazing no longer takes place, it'll cover the ground. It's a wonderful, soft, feathery grass. Now, this has been then the uh a grass area, this the is habitat the, that would be sandy areas? Uh, yeah, well, let's go take a look at the uh, sand garden right okay. here. Oh, so this is the real sand. This is the sand garden here. This would be, these would be the plants that you would find in the sand dune areas on both sides of El Paso and actually all the way up to Albuquerque. Right, sandy areas, and so, but they're not going to do well in a heavy soil. Nope, you got to have very well draining soil for this and for this plant right here. Oh, the famous purple sage the purple of sage. songs. And it gets these beautiful purple flowers this time of the year. If our monsoon rains are good. Mm -hmm. And otherwise, it just uh, looks like a bunch of nice green, tidy sticks. Well, kind of a silky green, though, even yeah. pretty when it's uh, not flowering. But the important thing is it really loves sandy soil. And a lot mm -hmm. of people fight sandy soils in their garden when they could be using these plants. Use the ones that are adapted. And beekeepers like this, too. Oh, excellent bee plant. So just be aware of plants, what they like. Here, we've looked at habitats. Things should be planted where they should be. We saw an arroyo habitat. Right. We saw the grassland area. We see the sand. Right. If people will plant those, plant, or appropriate plants in those areas, they'll do a lot better. It's a matter of looking at the plants that grow in the area you want to garden in and repeating those plants in your garden. We've seen only a little bit of the garden here, and it's beautiful. Well, I'm sure glad that uh, you were able to visit with us today, and I hope you'll come back. We will. Thank you for sharing. Thank you.
The preceding was a production of New Mexico State University. The views and opinions in this program are those of the author and do not necessarily represent the views and opinions of the NMSU Board of Regents.